fundamental reason for creation is the very attribute that God holds of being the creator. This is the fundamental reason. God is the creator. This is one of his attributes with which he describes himself. And the consequence of that attribute is creation. It is manifest. The Creator, because there is a Creator, there is creation. Creation is a product of God being the Creator. Just in simple terms, if we look in terms of man, if we think of a painter, and we say, so-and-so is a painting, painter, the first question you will ask, if you're told, so and so is a painter, can I see one of his paintings? Why? Because this person has been described as a painter, he is described as such because he produces paintings. The title painter implies that he paints. And if somebody were to tell you he doesn't have any paintings, you would think, what, what kind of painter is this? There's something wrong with this painter. A painter who has no painting? You see? Paint, painting is a reflection of the attribute of being a painter. On a higher level, God is the creator. And being the creator, there is creation. A painter who paints is greater than a painter who doesn't paint. And God is perfect. To deny him creation is to make him less than he is. Perfection of the attribute of creator is in creation. So God created fundamentally because of the fact that He is the Creator. Now why He created man? Because in the creation of man certain other of His attributes are manifest. The creation in general is a manifestation of His attribute of being the Creator. The creation of man manifests certain other attributes of God. Among them, forgiveness as being the all-forgiving. The Prophet Muhammad has said, if mankind did not commit sins and turn to Allah seeking His forgiveness, He would have replaced them with another people who would sin and ask Allah's forgiveness and He would forgive them. That is, God created man knowing that He would sin, that He would turn back to God and God would forgive him. So we can see in this statement of the Prophet Muhammad, may God peace and blessings be upon him, an explanation of why man, why man who commits sin. Because in man's committing sin and asking God's forgiveness, God forgives him and thus is manifest his quality of being the oft forgiving. He created angels, angels who commit no sin. And who praise Him all the time. Who worship Him all the time. So He didn't create man because He needed man's worship. 
just as the Akashat didn't create the angels because he needed the worship of the angels. But he created a, a, a being who would commit errors and ask his forgiveness and he would forgive them. His quality of forgiving, forgi for forgiveness, of being the off-forgiving is manifest in man's error, in the nature of man to commit error. And this is why he taught Adam, from the very first man he taught him how to earn salvation, how to ask God for forgiveness. And that is why sin is not inherited. But each individual commits sin, he or she may turn back to God seeking repentance and God forgives them. This is the story behind the creation of Adam and Eve in paradise. Why God created them, forbade them to eat from the tree knowing that they would eat from the tree. Because he knew the future. God knows what is to be. He knew before he created Adam that he would disobey him and eat from the tree. That is why when he created Adam, forbade him from eating from the tree, he also taught him words seeking forgiveness from God. It is deliberate. So in the creation of man, as I said, is manifest the mercy of God, his forgiveness. Furthermore, there is manifest the justice of God. That God is the most just and the most fear. Because in the creation of man and man's existence in this world is manifest God's justice. How? In that each human being chooses for himself or herself paradise or hell. God has informed us of right and wrong, inspired us to understand it, sent revelation to guide us, prophets to explain to us the way, and we are then responsible to choose either paradise or hell. And the judgment at the end of this world is the manifestation of his attribute of justice for those specifically who are going to hell. For those going to paradise, it is only a manifestation of the mercy of God. As the Imam mentioned in the khutbah today, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu had said, that no one would enter paradise based on his or her deeds alone. And the companions asked the Prophet, Even you, O Messenger of Allah? He said, Even I. Were it not that God cloaked me in His mercy and His grace, none, not even I, would enter paradise. So for those going to paradise, it is a reflection of the mercy of God and God's grace because it is not our deeds which take us to paradise alone now God's grace and mercy is related to our deeds it's not to say we don't have to do anything of course we do but the grace and mercy is from the side of God that he has multiplied the value of our good deeds over our evil deeds as Allah explained in the Qur'an, each good deed is worth ten times its value. And the evil deed is only worth itself. So when we do one good deed, it erases ten evil deeds. One evil deed is against us only as one evil deed. So it is by this change in the means of, of weighing the value of deeds that Allah's grace is manifest in the righteous. But in terms of those going to hell, as we said, it is a manifestation of the justice of Allah. Because if Allah had willed, He could have created men to end up what choices we are going to make 
and what we deserve in the end. So he could have put us in paradise and hell straight away without having to live through this life at all. Of course, those people going to paradise will never question Allah. Why did you put me in paradise? They will only be too happy to be in paradise.